Today we're going to go back to, to our roots. We're going to solve a problem that doesn't necessarily exist, but I created a theoretical scenario where this could be plausible. Let's say that, for instance, you sold your right kidney, and then with that money and your entire life savings, you finally have enough money to buy an RTX 3060. Well, that's good news, because that means you get to build a PC, and it's been like six years since you got to do that, but there's a problem. Because you want to build this once-in-a-lifetime PC, you want to go all in. You want to custom water cool it. And you got this 360 millimeter radiator, you're all ready to go, and then you realize you only got you only got one van, and you don't have any more money to buy any more fans. What are you gonna do? Well, a normal person would probably just take the one fan, put it on the radiator, and just call it a day, but not us. We are gonna try to find a way to populate these two empty spaces with something that's overly complicated, mechanical, and probably highly inefficient. My idea here is that we want to maintain the cooling performance, or some cooling performance in the center, so this needs to stay a fan, but it also needs to be able to drive two auxiliary fans that we're going to mount on either side. Initially, I thought maybe I'd put a gear train to each fan, but then I figured, uh, well, one, we all know how loud a gear fan is, if you remember that one video. Oh my god, it's zipping! And then also, the A12X25 isn't really known for its torque, so I don't know if it'll be able to drive all those gears and then two fans, I can really see that failing pretty quickly. So instead, I think the idea here will be to make some sort of belt drive to drive these two side fans from the center fan, hopefully fast enough that it will cool somewhat. It's gonna be very interesting. Let me show you in CAD what I've come up with, and then we'll see if it works. So here's the plan. Uh, let's first talk about the drive fan. It's pretty straightforward. We've all done this quite a few times. Instead of making something new and exciting, I kind of just took the, the fan that you can all download on Thingiverse. <laughs> Did you recognize this one? And then I just added a pulley on top of it. Easy as that. The rest of the system is a little more complicated, not too bad, but let's, let's have a look. For the belt, just a six millimeter wide timing belt that you can get on Amazon. They're pretty cheap if you want to do this. Connecting it is a little tricky. There's a tool that I designed up that you have to print out to cut the belt and then insert these pins, which are essentially just needles to hold it together. I'll explain it when we get to putting this together. It's not too bad, but you're definitely gonna need the tool that I will put on my Thingiverse along with everything else about this design. For tensioning, I didn't put any tensioners on here. I thought about it. I thought about using some springs or some rubber bands, but I wanna keep the load off the belt as much as possible because again, this motor doesn't really have that much torque, so we need to make sure that the belt is only as tight as it needs to be. So what instead we're gonna do is I put these slots on each of these auxiliary fans and we'll make sure that they're all the way in, close together, close to the center fan. We'll put a belt on there and then we'll push the auxiliary fans out just enough to get the belt to bite into the drive pulley. For these auxiliary fans, it's made up of three pieces. We got a main frame, the stabilizer, and the disc. The frame is what you'd expect a fan frame to look with with some additional holes and a slot instead of a, a hole itself. The motor obviously is gone and instead we're going to have a bearing that's press fit in there. These are pretty standard bearings that you can get on Amazon, pretty cheap. I think I got like a hundred of them for 20 bucks maybe or something like that. The fan disc is the same exact fan, just a smaller pulley. It's like a, I think it's a 1.2 gear ratio between the two. I didn't want to go so small that the fan couldn't drive it again, but I wanted to make sure we could up the RPM a little bit to improve airflow. For the axle, I thought about 3D printing one, but I think this is a better solution. This is an eight millimeter by 50 dowel and it's vented, which means it has this cut on the side and that will made up with this flat that I put on the fan disc. And the idea is this will be a press fit. Everything will kind of sit on this axle and the flat will keep the fan from wanting to spin around it. Now, because the fan is gonna be pulled from the top, kind of driven, we need to be able to stabilize it. This piece is gonna be our stabilizer and it's gonna have another bearing press fit into it that the axle will protrude through and that'll try to keep everything nice and square to make sure nothing binds up and that is just simply screwed in to the top of our frame. There is quite a few things we gotta print here. We gotta obviously print two of each of the auxiliary fans and the center fan. All of the information you need, what purchase items, what all the models, everything will be on my Thingiverse account, total bill of materials. If you wanna print this out yourself and mess around with it to see what you can make of it. But I've already printed all this out so that'll save us some time. We just gotta put it together and see if it works, how it works inside my head. For the frame, all we need to do really is just add a bearing to it. So that's just gonna push right down in there. Should be nice and flush. And that's pretty much it for this part. For the fan disc, on the other hand, we're gonna need to add our axle. So on the axle itself, you'll notice the vent or the flat side. One side is rounded. The other side has a 
a tapped hole to be pulled out later. Essentially, you want to make sure that that flat goes up against that little flat spot we put in the disc itself. We're just going to hammer it in until it touches the table. There you go. And I think the best way to go about this is to make sure that the dowel is flush with that bearing. So just tap it until you, you feel the two flush together. Bang, 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 bang. There we are. For our stabilizer, all we need to do is add a bearing on the top. It should be the same as the frame, just pressed in, flush, and that's just going to be mounted on the top like so. Now, the only thing that you might need to do after this, depending on how accurate your printer is, is add some shims. I designed this line for line, which is probably a mistake, but because of that, when, you're, when it's all put together, you could screw it together like it is and it works just fine. But if you raise it just a hair, it kind of takes a little bit of the load off of it and it springs a little more freely. So what I did was print out for these, I think two millimeter spacers and they're gonna go underneath each one of these feet and it's gonna lift it just a little bit. But we don't wanna do that just yet because we gotta mount these on a radiator, string our belt, and then we'll put our stabilizer on top and tension it. So this is the most fiddly part. We gotta use this little tool here to cut our belt to the right length. These are the pins we're gonna use to stitch it together. What you're gonna do, wrap said timing belt around the three motors and make sure you overlap it a little bit, mark it, and then just cut it. And then you're gonna have to take each side of the belt and cut it off at this angle here. Then you're gonna put both ends that are cut back into your tensioner, put the lid on and start pressing pins through the timing belt itself. And it's gonna press the pins right through the ridges on the belt. Once you got them through, you're gonna cut them off on the whole side and then using your flush cuts is what I use, pull them through the slotted side until you can just see the end of the needle disappear into the belt. Then you're gonna to have to remove the belt, trim the rest of them off, and what you're left with is a belt that's stitched together nice and cleanly and hopefully won't get caught on any of the pulleys as it's traversing our creation here. Putting the belt on though is pretty easy. You just over one side, over the other. So now we gotta put our stabilizers on the top with our spacers. We'll give her a shot. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Wait, I got it. Just barely slipping, but this is, uh, <laughs> this is as fast as it's going. Now, although it's working, uh, so it's, you can say it's a win. Very, it's very steampunk if you want to do like a steampunk theme build. I think we need to try to get a little more out of it if you want to see if it cools anything. So what we're going to do is add more power. Oh, uh, which one's which? I believe outside's ground. This one's power, I do believe. So. Come on. Does seem to spin a little faster with this power supply. Let's give her a little more juice. Oh yeah. Oh, 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 oh. That's more like it. It's only 14 volts though. 15 volts, there we go. I don't wanna to get too greedy. I can feel airflow, so we're gonna go with 16 volts and see if we can keep um, a system from throttling. If it does, I think it's a win. I mean, it's a win anyway, we got it to work, right? I gotta get a system out now. Everything's set up now. Um, this pump and the fans are running on this external power supply, just a normal PC power supply. While I was setting this whole deal up, I just let it run on this power supply and it actually worked out pretty good because it's kind of worked itself in. Things have quieted down a little bit. The belt doesn't slip as much. The RPM has come up a little bit. It's about 200, 210 RPM. So that's how we're gonna run it. We, we're not gonna over voltage it. We're just gonna let it run as is if it was like hooked up in a PC and see if it can keep this 7700K at 4.9 gigahertz from throttling. And if it can, it's a lot better than I could expect. I mean, getting it to go or getting it to print out and actually function is one thing. If it actually works, that's, uh, that's something else. So I'll see you in a bit. We'll see how this uh, plays out.
Good news. Um, it's actually starting to run better. You can see on the graph here where we're coming up, getting close to throttling, and then we actually start coming back down over here. And that's because as it's heated up, it's actually started to spin a little faster. We're setting about 330-ish RPM. So I think that's, we can call it a win at this point. Now, I, I do want to see, just to make sure that it will throttle without fans, because it's pretty cold in here right now. The room temperature is about 19 and a half C. So we're gonna just shut everything off. This is, we've, we've won at this point, uh, I guess you could say. So we're gonna shut everything off just to make sure that the, thr the system does throttle and that it's not just cold enough in the room to keep, okay, that didn't take very long. It's already throttling now. Oh yeah, we shut the pump off. All oh, right, so the pump's gotta come on. There we go, fans stay off. And we'll see how long it takes to throttle now. Hopefully it does. So 46 minutes in, you can see we're just now starting to throttle, so Good, now, that means that the fans were actually cooling it. And the one more thing I wanna check before we go ahead and call this a day is I'm just gonna put on one, one fan in the middle and not drive the two auxiliary fans just to see uh, how close we were to the performance of just one A12X25, just so we know. We gotta know. Ah, and there you go, it's a shock to no one. Uh, one single A12X25 does outperform this monstrosity that we've created but you know it was fun like i said if you want to download all this and make one yourself or do anything you want to it i'll put this on my thingiverse account with all the models bill of materials all the good stuff check it out hope you guys enjoyed the video it was a lot of fun if you have any other ideas for crazy steampunk belt driven maybe we'll do gear stuff maybe i'll just get another maybe i'll get like a motor that can actually put out some more torque and we'll do some of that but let me know in the comments down below thank you guys for watching uh, we'll see you next time